In the last video, we reached into our power tool bag and we looked at a bunch of essential tools for an electrician. In this one, we're gonna take a quick high level across essential hand tools. What you gonna do with your hand tools if you don't have a place to put them? You know what I see? I see some guys wearing these micro tool belts where they've got like space for like three or four items and they do very, very specific tasks and that's it. I've never had that luxury. I've always been more diversified and I've worn a larger tool belt. Let me tell you what, if you gravitate towards a tool belt with a name brand, it will last longer. I've used this Klein tool belt professionally for, I think four years at this point. It's probably got another two or three left in it before the pockets start to rip apart, but that's really good for daily use. You've got your tape toggles, and being an electrician's tool belt makes all of the difference. Do not settle for a carpenter's tool belt. Do, don't go another direction because the pocket sizes are positioned and sized for the work that we do. So don't settle for lesser quality. On the back side, I have actually added more of a traditional part, carpenter's pouch, and this is strictly for parts. I've got distinct parts that go in each segment and that's for quick grab for wire nuts, staples, and things like that. I've usually been a Klein, Ideal, Channel Locks kind of guy, but this time I went with Nipix? Knipix? You decide, how is it pronounced? But this little guy, high leverage cutting lineman's pliers, this, is, this cut is good for anything. You can cut steel, copper, aluminum. Um, some of these tools, like these strippers, are a much lighter weight and they're only rated for soft metals like copper. But uh, man, this, this will get the work done. If you look real closely here, see that notch in the jaw? Can you see that? Right? I loaned them out and they came back with a notch because somebody cut a live circuit. Pow! I guarantee you're gonna do it too at some point. You're gonna cut into something, either your tester wasn't working and uh, you're gonna blow a hole in your $40 pliers. We've got Romex strippers. You see the really interesting jaw there? That jaw shape is very specific for non-metallic cable, commonly called Romex. You see what some companies have done is they've taken all the dangerous tools away from their employees and they've wrapped them in bubble wrap and they've set them on a shelf because they don't want them to get hurt. But guess what? I'm a big fan of specialty strippers and there are a whole host of different types whether you're stripping larger gauge like 500 KC mil, there's a specialty stripper for that. But, you know what? Utilize some basic Boy Scout skills and uh, don't, don't throw the knife out. This utility knife is one of the most all-purpose tools that uh, I'll utilize. It's a folding knife, um, so I can stick it in my pocket if I am going up in an attic real quick to perform a small task. This is basic. It's not insulated for electrical safety, and I'm not actually sure if a knife on the market right now that is. If you find one, drop it in the comments below. Um, I do want to illuminate two things, right? One is a dull blade is an unsafe blade because anytime you have a dull blade, you're exerting undue force. The blade itself is at risk of snapping and you've got a metal shard that's flying off into space. And um, if you get cut with an un a dull blade, right, because there's so much force required behind it, your cut's going to be nasty. It's going to be terrible. Take a look at this blade. Does anybody know what this blade is for? This is a roofing blade for asphalt shingles. As an electrician, you're not gonna utilize that often, but there will be moments when you're building a service, an electrical service to a home, and your mast penetrates the roof, and you are required to cut the shingles. This blade is gonna be your friend. So I've got a variety of blades that I keep, um, and this one specifically, when needed, you know those eight, 10, 12 times a year, it's gold. All right. There are so many electrician screwdrivers, insulated handles. These are uninsulated shafts. I would purchase insulated shafts next time. There's an advantage to that when working in tight spaces like electrical panels where um, two terminals are close to each other and the, uh, although your hand is insulated, there's risk of arcing across the shaft between those two terminals. But here's the deal, this is my number one complaint. You're gonna get like four flathead screwdrivers in any combo pack that you purchase. And I really only need about two, maybe three at most. Well, what's the deal with the flathead? If Adam and Eve had never sinned in the Garden of Eden, we would have skipped the curse on work. We would have skipped the flathead entirely and we would have gone straight 
to the T25 Torx. I guarantee it. Um, but real quick, 3 16 flathead, that's good for your plate screws and a lot of other things too. This is a number two square drive. This is good for panel terminations and the industry as a whole has migrated to more number two tooling because it's just so consistent and difficult to strip. You can get a lot of torque on that. 5 16 flathead again, we've introduced this in the past. This is your chisel, your pry bar. It's not intended for that use, um, but man, it works really well in a pinch. Um, you might get some micro screwdrivers. That's great to have like an eighth inch flathead and a number zero Phillips. Your number two Phillips, that's your bread and butter Phillips right there. Number two, that refers to the size of the bit head. This is the one that you always seem to have to buy independently. And it's extremely commonly used for all electrical devices, receptacles, switches, GFCIs of all types. And that's a number one square drive. This number one square drive is an absolute must have. If you show up to the first day of work and everyone else has purchased their combo pack, but you've purchased combo pack plus, guess what? You're raising eyebrows and you're doing it the right way. All right, hammer, fiberglass. I don't recommend wood, it's not gonna be as durable. Fiberglass handle to prevent conduct accidental conductivity. You can buy a, like a 24 ounce, 32 ounce metal shaft framing hammer. But guess what, a 16 ounce fiberglass is perfect for the work that an electrician does. I don't recommend anything heavier than that. I always carry two sizes of channel locks on me and my 10 year old asked me the other, other day, he's like, dad, this one can do everything this one does, right? And I said, you're absolutely correct, except for tight spaces, right? This is my tight space guy right here. It's just incredibly useful. But the reason you have two channel locks is for opposing forces, right? When you're tightening down fittings or loosening fittings, two channel locks is imperative. So I recommend actually a total of three, the, the mini, the nine or 10 inch, the medium, and then even going up to the 12 or 14, the large size, so you can really grasp two inch EMT and larger size fittings uh, appropriately without slippage. Next, we've got the diagonal crimping pliers. These crimping pliers, the cut is right at the end. So if you're working in a device box, and by the way, I'm gonna demonstrate the use of all these tools in real world settings, but I want you to get a little bit more of a focused introduction tool by tool. There's nothing more embarrassing than going to your supervisor and being like, hey, I left my, um, what's it called at home? Could I borrow yours, right? Don't do that. That's not a good look. So your diagonal crimping pliers, they've got two sets of crimps that are designed for uh, setting electrical fasteners and terminals in place. And then the cut, again, is right at the end, so you can really get in snug places. Um, this one, because the cut is at the end and it's further from the, uh, the axis, it's not gonna give you as much lever leverage, but it's uh, outstanding for copper. But you really can't attempt larger cuts of heavier materials with those. This is my preferred stubby right here. This is the basic, the simple, the interchangeable, as opposed to having three or four stubby screwdrivers with multiple types of screws, one universal stubby that accepts, if you need a unique bit, right, because it's got the interchangeable shaft, you can go to your driver bin, you can pull out a T20 Torx, a T25 Torx, a T30 Torx, you can pull out tamper resistant bits, you can slip them in your stubby, and you're rocking and rolling. So everybody, everybody needs a good stubby, and this one's particularly compact. Some stubbies are three or four inches. I recommend getting the smallest one that you can find. Strippers, these are not actually conventional wire strippers. Uh, Milwaukee recently made an upgrade and I love the upgrade. I had so much muscle memory associated with the old style of strippers that I almost threw these out because they're just a little different um, than what I was used to in the trade. But man, the fact that they've got a larger work surface at the end, they function as more effective needle nose pliers and they're, they're beefier so you actually do get more cutting leverage. And then this accessory right here, check that out. This is designed for cutting machine screw threads. 632 and 832, which are two basic building blocks of the electrical industry. And if you take your screw and you spin them into those holes and then pinch down, you're gonna cut the threads clean in such a fashion 
that the threads are still usable. So this is really a, a four in one right here. It's needle nose pliers, wire strippers, wire cutters, and thread cutters. And I tell you what, if you attempted to utilize another tool, like any one of these three tools to cut threads, one, you would destroy your cutting surface on this lightweight tool, wouldn't work. Two, on both of these, you would gum up your threads and you wouldn't be able to thread a nut onto them because the threads would be deformed. So when it comes to cutting threads, the proper tool is absolutely essential. As an apprentice, I have, I've used the wrong tool to cut threads and then I've spent the next 15 minutes trying to file and wiggle and force the nut onto my machine screw. I'll tell you what, purchase the tool that'll get it done fast for you. Tin snips. There's nothing real special about these tin snips. They make centers, left hands, right hands. Um, but um, my recommendation to you is I've seen guys attempt to use those power tools that we just looked at to cut lightweight flashing. Um, back to that scenario, running a mast through a roof um, or um, on solar projects, creating flashing to seal penetrations in the roof. If you try to do that with a sawzall, a fine tool, a fest tool, uh, you're actually in for a bit of a hazard. That flashing crumples, twists, and uh, I've gotten some cuts on my hands from poor attempts in the past. These tin snips are going to be incredibly controlled and they'll give you a precise cut the first time. This is like a $10 tool. Last but not least, we've got the tape measure. I carry with me a 16 foot tape measure. That gets pretty much all my jobs done, but I do have uh, anywhere from a 25 to a 40 footer on the truck, as well as a laser level. A couple things I like about this tape measure, it's Cobalt, which is a decent brand. Um, cost to performance ratio is really good with Cobalt on some of their basic tools that don't have a lot of moving parts. Um, this tape measure uh, has a magnetic end, so when I'm on a commercial job site, or even occasionally on a residential job site, man, I just stick it, right, pull it, holds itself in place. It also has a top catch as well as a bottom catch and that's pretty much essential. I would not compromise on that in a tape measure. Top catch, magnetism, and some pretty decent standout. I invite you to comment below with any essential tools that we missed. My tool bucket is still full. We're gonna dig into more tools and their proper application and the selection around those tools. But I encourage you to keep your linemen's handy because we're going to jump into wire and wire connectors in the next video.